Welcome to another episode of Average Joe's 3D. I'm your host Fergie. Today we're doing things backwards. I usually wait till the end of the episode to show you the settings, but uh, I think today we're going to do it the opposite way. I'm going to show you the settings first. All right, the reason I do is because if you just want to get the settings and go, I definitely recommend it. We're um, printing again with a one millimeter nozzle on a CR10. And we're printing all these pieces. Let me turn that off. We're printing all that. That's a lot of stuff. Now these are all structural. They're not artistic, which means that printing them in a one meter, millimeter nozzle uh, is only going to make it better and not worse because you realize that one millimeter is about two and a half times the size of the 0.4 millimeter. So it's already much thicker than you would get with just two parameters, right? So the structurally, it should be great. So let's take a look at the settings because you don't have to change much. After you put on the new nozzle, and you do have to usually um, recalibrate and re-level your bed, you go to, uh, there we go. We're gonna go down to uh, edit process and it brings up our screen. Now we're not changing much here. Let me move this over a little bit. There we go. So what are we changing? Okay, so I have to change nozzle diameter, of course. That's one. And I have to change the extrusion width because it's now gonna be one millimeter wide. I haven't touched my multiplier and I haven't touched my retraction distance and I haven't touched the coasting. Those all are going to remain the same. Uh, I'm using about 10% um, infill here. I know it says 13, but it should be about 10. Because it's thicker infill, I don't need as much. Now on the next page, which is layer, here, I'm changing the primary layer height up here. Now usually I go with 0.2 millimeter. It's a great compromise between speed and quality. But if you go too low on this, if you do a two or a one and a half, what's going to happen is the line that it lays out is going to be so thick that the nozzle will start pressing in to the plastic and do something called shoveling. The nozzle will actually press against the middle of this and ooze everything out to the side, and that leaves ridges in between each line. What can happen if you leave enough ridges and they build up over line by line is eventually your nozzle is going to catch on one and it's going to um, get a layer shift and then another layer shift and then another layer shift and you're just going to totally burn your print. So you've got to, instead of pressing your nozzle down into it, you've got to raise it up just a little bit, the X. And the easiest way I've found to raise the X is just go ahead and raise my layer height from 0.2 to 0.5. Now you notice that on the uh, outline or parameter cells, I usually have that two or three. I only went with one. Same thing with the bottom layer. Instead of being three, I only went with two. So, so far we've changed the nozzle from a 0.4 to a one. I've changed the layer height to 0.5. Uh, no additions. Uh, have a little bit of info on this. Uh, supports, I'm not going to worry about. Um, temperature, you're pushing more filament, it has to be hotter. You're trying to push more filament through that hot end at any given time. Uh, so I want, usually I use about 110, um, 220 to 230, maybe 225 is great. In this instance, because of the filament I had, I had to go with 230 and it worked great. Uh, the loading was not a problem at all. The bed heat remains at 40. The other thing you have to do is speed. Now you might think about slowing it down a little bit because it is trying to push so much at once. So on mine I was going about 2400 millimeters per minute and it seemed to feed just fine. So let's see what we got here because those are the only changes I made. All right, so we're going to go over here and here it is. Here's the finished product. Now, the first thing you're going to notice besides all the massive shapes is look at all the stringing. Now remember, this is not dialed in. 
we probably should have messed with the um, retraction but and maybe the heat the heat may have been too much but I'm really not going to worry about it because once again these are structural and they're not uh, artistic so I can have a little bit of stringing maybe a zit or two here and there and not uh, do anything to the function at all um, other than that it seems to have fed really well if you take a look a um, couple lines here not really a layer shift but um, there's a problem with feeding right there probably when I was in bed so let's take all this off and you can see this compared to some of the other pieces I've already printed here using a 0.4 millimeter nozzle and here's your result so one set of these was done on the CR10 using a 4 millimeter nozzle the other one was done on the CR10 using a 10 meter uh, a 1 millimeter nozzle so let's take a look at these one by one so here's one and here's the other one now I know which is which I guess the question is can you pick which is which there we go so if you take a look at these you have this and you have that now if you take a look at the top finish you'll notice that this is a little bit glossier right a little bit more textured if we flip them over you see that this is pretty nice and that's just a little bit discolored from the initial um, lay down so this is the one that was done with a one millimeter and this was the one that was done with a 0.4 but from a distance you can't tell the difference not really if I zoom back here there's not much of a difference between them and, and this is what's going on um, the sides the layers were almost identical you'd be hard-pressed unless you had a flashlight and a magnifying glass to tell the difference between the layers they're almost identical really good layers are layer adhesion um, it's only the tops so when it goes flat that you can tell so let's take a look at these okay here we go so you can see that layer wise they're almost identical top and bottom this one's like this and this one's like this okay well now you can, you can tell the difference uh, that uh, icon those letters didn't stick out which is because of the resolution and the back you see the stringing there and it's pretty solid here but but you know structurally wise it's not a beauty contest with these I'm okay with going with a one millimeter nozzle and getting the sidewalls I want and the rigidity I want that I don't have on this one the last one here you go okay once again if you take a look at the side uh, pretty darn good this one's just a little bit um, looser in the layers than the other ones you can see because of the way the initial layers went down because they didn't optimize one millimeter nozzle you can see a little bit of the difference but still if you go here they look pretty close this one's not as good and if you look here on the top um, close up you can see the difference further away you're not going to so I am building a camera stabilizer right there's like 27 parts and I started doing it in the four millimeter taking forever and then I got smart and I said hey why don't I just do a one millimeter nozzle and put it all together because this has to hold down nuts bolts and springs and tension and I think that the one millimeter is going to do much better these are my ones than adding like three or four perimeters to a 0.4 millimeter nozzle so what did we learn we learned that there aren't very many changes when you're going from 0.4 millimeter to one millimeter I would have to adjust the extruder a little bit more there you go maybe increase the amount of retraction distance I get and maybe add a little bit of coasting at the end to even out those layers so the certain stop isn't as quick with those two things dialed in 
you wouldn't be able to tell the difference between the two except the fine detail on the bottom lettering. Other than that, they look the same. Well, I hope you enjoyed this episode of Average Shows 3D, and you have a great day. Got a quick PS here. I almost forgot to mention that if your layers are thicker because you're using one millimeter, then if you're using any kind of support, it's going to be thicker as well. I mean, much thicker. I had these at a 0.1 millimeter thickness, and it came out super thick, almost like it's printed on there, like I can't even break it. Um, it's going to, so removing your supports are going to take much longer with a one millimeter than it would with the 0.4. So take that into effect as well. If there's something that takes a lot of support, you probably don't want to go with one millimeter. Have a great day.